We have storms to the east of us. We have storms to the west of us. But everything's all clear Earth's side. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has definitely quieted down compared to last week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, back on the 5th we did have a bright region in Earth view that fired off a solar storm that went east of Earth, and that got us a little bit excited, thinking maybe this thing was going to do something. And then, before we even got settled, we had another solar storm fired off to the west of us. This was due to the filament channels that we were watching very eagerly last week. It looks like maybe one of them let go and it let off a beautiful uh, solar storm in coronagraphs, but that went west of us. So my goodness, we had storms to the east of us, we had storms to the west of us, and we got super excited. Then when we switched back to that bright region, ah, oh, where did it go? It lost, it fizzled on us. So then we kept watching and another bright region began to form in the finger-like coronal hole that we've also been watching. Unfortunately, that region looks like it's also fizzled. So we're just kind of sitting here in a quiet zone, I guess. Meanwhile, that coronal hole is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next probably day. So we might get a little bit of fast wind from that. But other than that, we've been pretty much sitting at quiet conditions to maybe unsettled conditions. And it looks like the solar flux has also tanked. We actually might be back into the poor range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to remain that way. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see we're back to a very low floor right now. Don't worry about the ups and downs. This is just orbit variation. It just happens to be that season where it looks like the flux is going up and down, but it's not the sun. It just goes going around in its orbit. Meanwhile, you can see the fluxes continue to trend very low. This is because we have no sunspots on the Earth-facing disk, and sadly, we have dropped back into the high 60s for solar flux. So we're dealing with poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. And it, we might get a little bit of a reprieve because we do see a bright region in stereo's view, but it's going to take a few days for it to reach Earth view. So we're just going to have to keep dealing with this over the next couple days. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you know, we have to go back to the 28th to see the last time we actually reached storm levels. This was due to that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that rotated through the Earth strike zone that was in the north. It was a really strong coronal hole and it gave us a decent punch. It, we brought this up to storm levels on the 28th and then again on the 30th. And it took us until about the second for us to settle down, which meant we had some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world in all the way down to mid-latitudes. And that was just really fun. It was a nice treat. Meanwhile, we've kind of quieted down and quieted down. We went to unsettled conditions and then down to quiet conditions. Ugh. And we kind of lasted there for a little while. And now we've popped back up to unsettled. And this is pretty much where it's going to stay. We do have that coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. It's a finger-like coronal hole, so it's kind of a remnant coronal hole. There's not much to it. That could bump us back up to maybe even more unsettled conditions. Doubt it's going to make it to active conditions, but at least it'll give us something at high latitudes. But outside of that, it looks like this is about as good as it's going to get. And during the recent fast solar wind we've been getting, including that solar storm that we got at the beginning of the month, we've had some gorgeous aurora views over many parts of the world. And here's a few shots from Norway. It was seen in multiple places in Norway. And it was seen in Sweden. And we had some shots in Scotland. And as we begin to go over the Atlantic, it was seen in Iceland. And as we go over to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in many places in Canada, like these in Manitoba, multiple places in Manitoba. And it was seen in multiple places in Saskatchewan, and also Alberta. And as we dip down into the United States, of course it was seen in Alaska, but it was also seen in Michigan. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look at the disk in Stereo's view, you do see that region down in the south. Now back on the 5th, this is the region that fired that solar storm that went east of Earth. But since then, it kind of fizzled out. And we were thinking, oh, bummer, that's not going to give us much. And then we started seeing another region begin to build inside that finger-like coronal hole. That was back on the 9th or so, but it's not done all that much either, and we are still sitting in the high 60s for solar flux, and that means poor radio propagation. But since then, as we look past that in Stereo's view, we are seeing a new region in the north that's rotating into Stereo's view, and possibly a new region emerging in the south. And if those regions rotate into Earth view, that might give us enough to boost that solar flux back up into the marginal range. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're just going to have to hang in there for a few more days. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 17th. So you night sky watchers, now's a great chance to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, everything has been pretty quiet and things at least early part of the week are going to continue that way. Now we do have that coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone right about midweek. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm and actually by midweek, possibly up to about a 30% chance of a minor storm when that fast wind hits Earth. Now at mid-latitudes, we're also expecting normal to unsettled conditions with up to about a 5% chance of active conditions until that fast wind hits. When it hits, we could be up to about a 25% chance of active conditions. But guaranteed, if there are any aurora chances at mid-latitudes, they're going to be very fleeting. So only if you're a real dedicated aurora chaser should you even bother. Most likely things are going to be very sporadic and they're going to die out pretty quickly. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a spotless sun right now, despite the fact that we do have a bright region in Earth view. And this is good news for GPS users. You have no risk for radio blackouts and therefore uh, GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty top notch. Sadly though, it does mean that solar flux has dipped back into the high 60s. We do have poor radio propagation on Earth's day side, but we do have a couple bright regions that will be rotating into Earth view here over the next maybe three or four days. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, hold on because we might get back into that marginal range here near the end of the week. Now also because we are still trying to climb out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is going to remain reasonably quiet. We've had storms to the east of us, we've had storms to the west of us, but we've not had much when it comes to the Earth-directed solar storms, and that means conditions will continue to be quiet for quite some time. We do have a small remnant coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, which could bring us some decent aurora views at high latitudes, but only fleeting aurora views at mid-latitudes, possibly around mid-week. But only if you're a dedicated aurora photographer at mid-latitude should you even try to pursue this because it probably won't last all that long. Now meanwhile amateur radio operators and emergency responders you're suffering just a little bit because yes solar flux has managed to dump back into the high 60s here at least for the next couple days but we do have a reprieve because we do have a few bright regions on the sun's far side that will be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. And that does mean that solar flux could, could, bump back up into the low 70s and give us some marginal radio propagation. So, you know, just hang in there and maybe the day side will get a little bit better. Now, you GPS users, on the other hand, you should be celebrating. We don't really have any solar storms hitting and the solar flux continues to be low. So GPS reception pretty much all over, all over the globe should be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.